mode. Yes, uh, good morning to um, to all of you and, and welcome on this um, uh, webinar uh, regarding the new uh, user interface framework uh, that we uh, have developed for uh, Prodimax WMS. Uh, my name is Luc van der Perre. Um, I um, will assist um, Jill, who will be doing the webinar, and um, will wait for a few more minutes uh, to see whether uh, other people uh, will join in. Thank you, Luc. Okay. So, will you take over, Jim? Yes. Thank you, Luc. Okay, let's wait a couple more seconds because I see we have people joining. And then we'll kick off. Okay. I think I don't see anyone joining anymore for the moment. So, I think we are ready to go. So, you are all muted for the moment. Um, we will have a Q&A session at the end, uh, and then we will unmute you. Uh, but of course, feel free to ask your questions in the in this chat or via the questions, and then we will always um, answer them as well at the end. So, uh, the UI framework that has been uh, integrated today in the new 2021.03 release is a prototype version. So that's important to understand that this is a first version that will, uh, it's not the final version. And it, the first version that we release focuses on the receiving flow. So that's where we are now. We're fine tuning the reception process with this new UI framework. For those of you who don't know the WMS that well, the reception flow is part of the purchasing module where we are buying uh, goods from our suppliers and we receive them in with the handheld. And this, if you look at this uh, image from the wiki, can possibly contain a lot of steps depending on your configuration that you have put and uh, yeah, the flow that you are using and the data that you have in your system, you could have a lot of steps. So the goal of this UI framework is to fine-tune the process to have the minimum amount of steps that the customer needs but to still uh, make it work and so um, everything uh, everything will still work but they have less steps to, to to go through this so how can we now do this there is a new customization parameter that we can use inside the bot file i will show you later when we go onto the live system and when we start it up it will allow to customize the screen and the buttons through a customization icon that will become visible when we start with this new parameter. When we then click on this customization icon, we can change the behavior of that screen. We can make buttons visible, not visible. We can make them default. We can automatically go through. We'll go into details in a, in a couple of minutes when we go onto the live system. Uh, so this is how we can build configuration for each screen in the step in the flow sorry and it's defined for sub users or sub user groups so you could make some nice user groups for wms and then uh, depend the, the the flow could depend on those user groups experienced users might have more possibilities than interim people that work in the warehouse so for an interimer we could make it a very simple process and for more experienced people we could give them more options for example now let's jump onto the system. Bear with me for a second. I have to switch to full screen mode. So we're going to have some. All right. So let me start off by showing you the customization parameter in the bot file. So this was my normal scanner where we have the, the content of the bot file like we usually have, the link to the fat client and, and all the other parameters, but th that's it. And if we look inside the new one, the customized one, there we will see that we have here at the end a slash cost. So when you add this to a bot file, then you will be able to do the customization afterwards. So if I start up one of these scanners, start up the customizable one now, and we will see it uh, easily once uh, we sign in.
So once we sign in, we come into the main menus. Of course, these can be customized using the standard technology with, uh, with the scripts. But once we go inside the reception flow, that's where we see now our new icon. And uh, that's what we will use to configure. Now, I typically recommend, I think, when you do this at the customer, um, and it's an existing customer, then you might want to open uh, a standard scanner next to it just to compare how it's currently configured because uh, when you are running it in customization mode, you will not see existing customizations because you can add and delete them, right? So if we look at the standard flow in this screen, it still works the same way. You see, it looks exactly the same. The only difference is here we have the icon and here we don't. So an example of um, customizing the screen, let me get rid of these guys, could be that um, in my case, these are two docs, one for my uh, warehouse one and one for my second warehouse. Here, for example, I could say that, well, nine times out of 10, I'm receiving in the, in the general warehouse. It's only very exceptional that this user has to book something in the other warehouse. So how could we make his life easier? When I click on this icon to start the customization, I can then click on the button that I want to uh, customize or automate, which would be in this case the arrow forward, because I would want him to go forward after a couple of seconds. So when I click on this button, it then, it doesn't continue in the flow, eh, but it opens you the menu. And I can make this one the default, and I could set here a timeout of, for example, two seconds. In this case, I will do it for all the user or user groups, but I could have done it only for a specific user, only for manager that I'm signed in with now, but yeah, I'll do it for all the users to make this the default button after two seconds. So we'll see that. So if I now wanna continue in my customization, I need to make it gray again, because if I click here, I will just see the customization again, okay? So you need to make it gray, and then you can continue in your process, okay? So I continue, same thing here, still looks the same. And then here, maybe I, do, I, maybe I don't want to see this screen. Maybe I always want to select an order because I'm always receiving based on a purchase order. Well, let's do it. Uh, again, I make it red to start the configuration. I could then select any of these buttons to do something with it. I'm looking for the order button. When I click on it, I can make it a default button for all users or for specific users again and I won't set a timeout, so then it will just jump through and we will not even see the screen the next time. Okay, so I'll save that as well. The order button is the default button. Then I make it gray again so I can continue. Go into my order. And here, of course, we have, depending on your supplier, we can have different screens. And so if I select a Far East, uh, then I will get questions for identical logistic unit. You know that these questions we can skip, experienced users will know that, that some of these questions we can already skip based on the supplier, but now it's a lot more flexible. And now you could say that, um, let me take another PO, experienced users, for example, might get this screen because they can then scan the barcode and they know uh, what to scan. But maybe for, again, interim people, maybe you don't want them to scan barcodes because they might scan the wrong one and then you're even further away from home than, uh, than, than you want. So uh, we want them to manually enter the data. Well, then we won't show this screen maybe only for specific users. And so I could say the no logistic label, uh, no logistic unit. I could uh, to automatically click that button if you're an interimer. If you're an experienced user, then you might still see the screen, for example. I'll leave it like this for now. Um, I do my select the product. I'm going to follow a little bit here just so you can compare because you should always look at the standard flow because I want to explain the difference between what you can see here. You see here in the select a product, you see that there's a button visible here and in real life, it's not visible. Why is this? Because the screens will return to their raw format. Uh, what do I mean with this? In, in, in Technically, on this screen, this button is behind it as well. It's just hidden, okay? And you can tell because it's not translated. Because it says button one, you know that it's not in use because you see that it's never, it's not translated, so you know that it's not in use. But it's future-proof. So when we ever would decide that we want to use and implement this button, which is implemented in other flows, just not in the reception flow, um, 
then we are, then we have it immediately supported to to customize it as well because uh, the screens go back to their raw format. But in this case, you shouldn't worry too much about this button one because you will never see it in the reception flow. Okay. I won't customize anything here. I'll just select my product and, and continue. Then I've added some remarks. I don't know if you guys ever used this, but I, I wanted to show that even if we add optional screens, I have made some configurations so I get my free text here from my purchase order as a remark when I'm doing my receiving. Even these screens that show for specific orders and will not show for other orders, we can still customize. And so maybe here I want to see the remark, but after one second or two seconds, it can continue. I don't want to click the button myself. Let's make our life easier. So again, I make it red so I can start the customizing. I'll make it a default button after two seconds, for example. Okay, I'll save it, make it gray so I can continue. And then we come to the batch number and this is maybe a final step that I might customize. Um, here you could use like uh, an idea that, well, the system has uh, automatically generated my batch number, but maybe the supplier sometimes sends a, a barcode for a batch number, then what could we do here, for example, that, okay, we come into the screen, the system will generate it, and if you immediately scan the barcode of the other batch number, then fine, then we will accept it and you continue. But I could say here as well that, well, if you haven't scanned anything for five seconds, then I'm just gonna go through and assume that this is the batch that we wanna use. Right, so I'll do the same thing, click on the arrow, say that this is the default button, and let's wait for five seconds for someone to scan something. If it doesn't come by then, then we can continue, for example, right? I won't customize anything here. So notice then that when I run through the script, it's still the same. Also, when I uh, go on my scanner that I previously uh, already started, it's also still the same. I have to restart my scanners here, to be able to see that uh, effect that we just did. So let's do it. I'll close uh, both of my, my scanners. And so don't start the customized one to test it. And to test it out, you need to start the real one, let's say, the one that you will actually use. Sign in. So I go into purchasing. Then I go into reception, it's gonna uh, ask me for a doc selection, but I won't do anything. Eh? I will just, normally I think I said two seconds that it should automatically continue with doc one. So let's see, I do reception, one, two, there he goes. All right, so I didn't do anything. He did it all by himself that, okay, you had two seconds to select warehouse two, you didn't do it. Okay, then I continue in warehouse one. Here, I open my purchase order. I didn't customize anything here. Uh, and yeah, I already forgot. Make, uh, we, didn't, we never saw, we never selected the order button. I remember that we had, normally have to select no PO or order or container. I, I never selected it, right? Because it automatically selected the, the PO button. I forgot to, to mention. Then I select uh, my purchase order. Here on my product, I haven't changed anything. But the next step when I have my batch number, it should, oh, and this one should jump through as well. Boom, there it goes. And then the batch number, I think five seconds, four, five, so, well, there it goes. So then I come to my quantity screen and I have to enter my quantity. So this is, this is the, the kind of things that we have today in this, in this prototype version of the UI framework. Let me quickly jump back to my slides to go over a final topic is, that as this is a prototype version, we are really interested in what you guys think about it, how you partners feel that this can bring value to your customers. Um, for that, there are two things uh, that we would like is to, for you to uh, sign on to our community and vote for the requests or even make uh, new product suggestions uh, also related to this new framework and vote for them. Uh, it's really important because we, we really use it a lot uh, to plan uh, for our future developments. And the second part that I want to mention is if you are not already subscribed to our newsletter, then this is probably quite interesting uh, to do that because on the 13th of May, we will send out a, a newsletter that includes a link to a UI framework survey.
So it's a survey with some questions that we will ask about the, what you think about this uh, new UI framework and everything that we can do with it. Okay, so that was it that uh, what we had foreseen for the live presentation. I think now we can uh, go over to the questions. Um, I see we also have Pedro here on the call, the product manager. Good Thank morning. you, for Pedro, for joining. And Good morning. I just, I just want to stress out what Jill just said, because your feedback and your interest in this new feature is going to guide our development. Uh, I, we, if we do not see interest from our partners uh, and in continuing to expand this framework, we will dedicate our efforts in other areas. On the other, on the other side, if we see that our partners are interested in this framework, we will expand it to other flows. So I see, thank you, Pedro, for jumping in. I see we have two, one remark and one question from Andy that absolutely bloody loved it. Thank you, Andy. That's really <laughs> nice. Um, and then I see we have a question from Nico. Can we add default values to input fields? I think today it's not possible yet. Uh, but I think, Pedro, correct me if I'm wrong, that this is something we want to do for the future. Well. So as this is a, a prototype, it, it can only do a limited amount of things, but we are planning indeed on expanding uh, what it can do. Yesterday, when we had the UI, uh, the, the same webinar for the US, we talked about like a conditional uh, trigger and not only based on user group or something, but that we can also do it based on a query, like if the item UDF is that, then I want to jump through. If it's not, then I don't want to jump through these kind of things. So we are um, absolutely open for your suggestions on uh, how we can improve on this. Don't be shy. I see we don't have any new questions for now. Yeah, so uh, please speak out if you have a, a question that you want to put directly to um, uh, to um, um, Jill or uh, Pedro. And now is, is your uh, chance. I see here a question. Yeah, from Mark. Yeah. This prototype is only in the reception flow. Can we use this in production environment? It's, it's correct that it's only in the reception flow for the moment. Uh, and I think we can use this in a production environment because I've played with it yeah, a lot and it's, it's very stable. It works well. Um, it's, it's no, I think it, you are safe to use this in a production environment. Yeah. So, so this, this is uh, uh, our different approach that we are doing with some certain features. So the feature is production ready. We call it a prototype because it is limited in scope, uh, but uh, it's, it's only limited to the reception flow but is fully functional uh, with the features that it has, and it has been gone through the normal tests and it is uh, ready to, for production. Thank you, Pedro. Okay, we don't see any more questions for the moment. Take advantage that you have us all here. Pedro and me and Luke. This session is recorded as well. So if you would have any questions or remarks that you don't come up with now, or you only think about them later, uh, don't hesitate to, to contact us either through the product suggestions, through the community or through contacting one of us. Okay. So, okay, I don't see any further. Moment, yeah, for, for, I don't see any further questions uh, coming. So um, we will um, share the the link to the webinar recording uh, with you, and if you come up with with specific uh, questions, you can uh, um, send them to uh, Jill, uh, Pedro, or or me, and we will make sure that uh, they will be answered. Is that all right for you? Okay. Thank you, Luke. Yeah, okay. I don't see any questions for the moment, so I think we can we can end it here. Thank you all for your uh, attention. I hope you liked it, and uh, see you in the next webinar. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. bye, -bye.